Hello strategy game fans, it is Rob from Explominate and I'm here today with AI War 2, which I'm going to be starting a beginner's guide for, because I believe there are a lot of people out there that have bought this game and maybe tried it and have had what I call a beginner's block with this game because there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of strategies that maybe aren't exactly easy to understand at first. And I think with a short series of videos, you might be able to get into this game a bit more and help yourself kind of develop your own strategies. With that being said, this is going to be our first episode where I show you how to do a game setup that works for most people at the beginner level. If you are somebody who already has played this game before and, and knows their game setup well, or doesn't really care about how to set up their game, you can skip this episode, go to the next episode. But for those of you who want to kind of have an idea of maybe the best way, in my opinion, to get off the ground running, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to start a custom start game. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So custom start, we're going to go up here and we're going to start by changing the colors of our factions. They start off with a blue and a red, I believe. And what I like to do is change it to a very bright green, which makes it very clear who I am. And I kind of remember it as green means go. And the AI, I make a little bit more obvious of a red, which of course, red usually means stop. So if you think of it, green means go, red means stop. It makes it a lot more easy to see and discern from the two of them. Next, I try to make sure that the difficulty hovers around five. I think five is a good difficulty because first of all, it's not too hard, but second of all, it is hard enough that you can't just steamroll everything and it makes you, it forces you to make decisions and think strategically. And I don't want you to think that this game isn't about the strategies because if you start to go too low on levels, it's pretty easy. If you've never played an RTS game before, then go ahead and try difficulty four. But I think difficulty five is probably where most people should start. It's going to help you get a good feel of how the AI pushes back ever so slightly. So my recommendation is difficulty five. With that being said, the next thing I wanna talk about is the map. All right, so the map and your starting location is extremely important in this game. And I say that because if you start in somewhere like this, and this is very difficult to defend, so as you can see, as you mouse over this, it says there's four wormholes here at Grove. And it's a bit hard to defend because you're going to have to defend four wormholes. Your starting location from four wormholes from the AI forces. That is a bit difficult, right? So what I want to do, what I normally do is find a corner like this and a spot where I'm only forced to concern myself with one wormhole. So we're going to start at Orion, which is great. I love the name Orion and we can make a fun little parody of this particular star system here in just a moment. I also want to talk about the number of planets. I think the default is 80 and it's a great start at 80 because the strategy of AI War 2 does not involve taking every planet. In fact, if you did, you'd lose. Your main strategy is to have a strike force or two or many that can go deep into AI territory and steal the things that you need from the AI in order to take the AI out. So with that being said, you need options. You need to have options. So I know that 80 may sound a little overwhelming and it may seem like there's way too many to take care of and to keep organized with. However, 80 is where it's, it's a sweet spot between maybe not being too overwhelming but also having enough options that you can start to branch out and strike the AI where you need it to. So that's where I think the sweet spot is. You can go up a little bit higher, of course, the little bit, a little bit higher is fine too. But if you go much lower, the problem is, is that you start to run out of options and you start running into massive AI forces much sooner than you're ready for it. So my suggestion is to find a, a star system that's kind of secluded and easier to defend. And then secondly, to make sure that the planetary systems are hovering around 80, as I believe that's a sweet spot between being a little too much, but also giving you enough, enough variety and enough options to strike out the AI and gain power. That's pretty much it. Okay. So I think those are the starting options that I would recommend as somebody who's probably just shy of a, an intermediate player. I'm certainly not great or expert or anything like that. 
but it's what's helped me get into this game and i hope that it'll help you get into this game as well in the next episode we're going to talk about how to start our game so stay tuned for that basically we're going to start with our starting system here to ryan and we are going to learn how to set up the defenses and then we're going to talk about the user interface and the variety of different resources so stay tuned for that episode so until next time guys this is rob from explominates keep exploring